Battlefield is back, and boy is it Battlefield. The series known for online combat on a grand scale once again sets an exhilarating stage, where breakneck infantry fighting and explosive vehicular warfare combine to create conflicts that are exciting, tense, and a whole lot of fun. These familiar thrills are spiced up by great map design and the invigorating obliteration mode, making Battlefield 4 multiplayer an immensely entertaining place to wage virtual war. On the single player side of things, while the campaign outdoes the dismal efforts of its predecessor and delivers some great action sequences, it still gets bogged down by dull cliches and unsure pacing. This is a game that thrives online and does very well on next-gen hardware. Though the franchise formula hasn't changed drastically, Battlefield 4 adds enough new to the tried and true to make taking the field an absolute blast. One of the best new things about Battlefield 4 is Obliteration Mode, in which two teams fight to gain control of a bomb and use it to blow up three enemy positions. Unlike returning Standby Conquest Mode, in which the battle ebbs and flows between a handful of set positions, Obliteration's conflict zones can change in a flash with the timely use of air, land, and sea vehicles. Plotting and executing your own dramatic maneuvers while anticipating and defending against the enemies is a lively challenge, Though in matches without vehicles, Obliteration's changes of fortune aren't so drastic. Victory here comes from solid squad support and sharp shooting, but close contests run the risk of devolving into lengthy scrums in which neither team can make headway. Rush, Domination, and Deathmatch modes are also back, alongside the new respawnless Diffuse mode which demands a more careful kind of infantry combat. Matches in the varying modes play out on different sized versions of the 10 well-designed maps. Richer color saturation makes them a pleasure to look at, while increased verticality makes urban combat more diverse. There's also a lot more water in play, and increased marine combat as a result. Prowling the narrow channels of Hainan Resort in an attack boat makes you a threat to foot soldiers and land vehicles alike. But like land vehicles on the open plains of Golmud Railway, boats are vital to mobility as well. Once the levee breaks in the Flood Zone map, you have to change your whole strategy for navigating around, lest you end up an easy target. This deluge is the most drastic of the marquee environmental events that players can trigger on each map. Some bring significant change, like the fall of the tower on Siege of Shanghai or the worsening weather on Paracel Storm, while others are more subtle, like closing jail doors to shut off a hallway or raising bollards to block a road. These special events are complemented by the wide range of destructible structures and deformable terrain. Blown out walls and collapsed buildings have a hard time hiding enemies, and roads pitted by bomb craters are more difficult to navigate. Destructibility has been amped up from Battlefield 3, making for a more liberating and empowering experience. While there are a wealth of powerful ways to customize the four basic classes to fill a multitude of combat roles, there's a new role returning from the series' history that gives you an entirely different way to play. Once you hit the requisite level, you can join a match as a commander. With a bird's eye view and a chat line to every squad leader, this mode lets you set objectives for troops, scan for enemies, and reinforce your team in a few other ways. Given that the tools available to a commander hinge largely on other players' inclination to acknowledge orders, it can be a hit or miss experience. And the single player campaign is that way too. It's a hit when you're fighting your way through a village using scattered weapons and the odd vehicle to carve a path to your allies, or when you're listening to your squad idly debate fortune cookie messaging. You never heard of that? The hell is that? Oh, come on, you know, like, you open up a fortune cookie and it says, tomorrow you will be reborn in bed. What's the in bed shit oh, about? Come on. Oh, come on, man, you get it. You know, like, like uh, you were gonna have a uh, eye-opening experience that'll change your life in bed. Already had that. What? It's a miss when you have to slog through long sections of corridor shooting, or when the pacing slows to a crawl to reinforce the most boring aspects of each character. The campaign action is good when it channels the freedom and variety of multiplayer, and the characters are likable when they act like characters who are soldiers, as opposed to soldiers who have character. Unfortunately, Battlefield 4 doesn't lean into these strengths often enough, making the campaign a decent but uninspiring diversion. 
So with five versions of the game spread across two generations of consoles, where's the best Battlefield? Unsurprisingly, the PC remains on top with excellent visuals and sprawling 64-player matches, and it's joined by the PlayStation 4 version, which also looks impressive and hosts the full 64. As for the Xbox One version, that review is under embargo for another two weeks. The current-gen consoles Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 still deliver solid visuals and exciting online play, but with matches limited to 24 players at the most, current-gen already feels like last-gen. But regardless of platform, Battlefield 4 multiplayer is a blast, and definitely the best reason to return to this hallowed franchise or dive in for the first time. Though the campaign makes strides in the right direction, it remains a sideshow to the main event, and what an event it is. Expansive and exciting, challenging and empowering, Battlefield 4 multiplayer is a thrilling endeavor in this generation or the next.